summer of crime. It has been quite a year, has it not? Especially since it's been one year since George Floyd's death in Minneapolis sparked nationwide protests by Antifa and the Black Lives Matter organization. One year of burning, looting, and rioting. One year of calls from the left to defund the police. Take a look at this. Well, protesters on Tuesday night, right there, that's what you're watching. This was in Portland. They tried to burn down the federal house that was torched a year ago. And then take a listen to this from the streets of Kansas City, Missouri, on Tuesday. We're tired of getting shot and killed because we're going to get pulled up with some air fresheners. And I got a bunch of air fresheners. I'm waiting for one of those to go. Because, baby, where I'm from, we don't get too about the police. Man, so what has all of this, a year of all of this, gotten us? Here to talk about it is Republican Congresswoman of New York, uh, Claudia Tenney. Claudia, thank you so much for joining us. It's always great to have you. Thank you. It's great let's, to be on. So let's take a look at these statistics in some of these big cities, the, specifically the homicide stats. They have significantly escalated from 2021. Portland up 800 percent. Atlanta up 50 percent. Minneapolis up 56 percent. Chicago up 22. Los Angeles 27. D.C. 35 percent. And you know all too well what's been happening in the state of New York. So how do you explain it? Because these big cities also are some of the most vocal cities where legislation is passed to defund police departments. Well, it's interesting after the summer of love that mm -hmm. so many of these police departments who actually got defunded, yeah. including New York City and across uh, the nation, are now looking to refund the police and bring more money to them because of these high uh, rates of crime, shootings, homicide. New York, under Governor Cuomo, passed uh, reform bills that would eliminate cash bail, which has wreaked havoc on our local governments and on our local police departments. You know, crime is rampant, and, and the primary objective of our government is to protect us and is for public safety. And there's been this vilification of police, which is unfortunate because the statistics don't, they don't talk about the 264 officers last year who were killed in the line of duty, or I think over 50 at this point have now been killed this year alone. Uh, we're seeing crime rates just rise tremendously, and people don't understand that we are, everyone uh, watched the George Floyd situation. It was a tragedy, and this does happen, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you eliminate all police. You know, we have a bad doctor or a bad lawyer or someone in a professional position. That doesn't mean we eliminate them entirely and end the entire uh, profession. Uh, so I think these, this reaction to it is now seeing more funding going into police, and in fact, that's what we need. We need the police to be better trained, we need to work with our communities better to understand them and have more recruitment for our police departments out of the communities. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do in our community. And in some cases, it's really it's really reaping the benefit. Uh, and people are we're seeing a little bit of a, uh, of a crime reduction. Yeah, I wanted to ask you uh, about an incident that happened on George Floyd Square on Tuesday morning as the family members of George Floyd were meeting uh, with President Biden at the White House on the anniversary of his death. A drive by shooting occurred. Uh, watch this AP reporter uh, during that scary moment. This bill of comprehensive police reform uh, to be uh, to just got to be careful here with some gunshots. Excuse us. Excuse us. It sounds like gunshots. I'll let you know what this is. These seem to be gunshots. Yeah. So, you know, that's in Minneapolis where we talked about the you know, increase in crime. You mentioned um, these uh, legislators trying to bring back funding that they took away specifically in L.A. County, the L.A. County Police Department. They took away $150 million specifically. Now they're trying to rehire 250 officers to try to stop crime there. Uh, what is the answer? I mean, how do we get back to getting our police officers back on the street and being able to do the job that we need them to do? 
Well, the vilification of police mm -hmm. is unacceptable. In my own community, in my district, uh, there is, it was a school district that actually put out a video and put out a curriculum that said, that told children that the police weren't your friends and they hated children. And so this is a, another problem we have is these, this type of rhetoric against police officers and we need to recruit more police officers. And sometimes the answers, especially, you know, the George Floyd policing bill, although well-intentioned, you know, does something to that eliminates, for example, qualified immunity, which would give some protection to police officers. And if that were to end, we would probably have no police officers willing to serve because they would be exposed to personal liability and the trial lawyers would be feasting on them. And it would be all about the trial lawyers making money and not about protecting our communities and keeping us safe. So the solutions that have been offered are not the answer. We need to actually give more money to our police departments for better training so that they know how to handle these tough situations. It's a difficult job. It's very stressful. And I think that our police officers first deserve respect. And also when a police officer makes a mistake, there is, uh, you know, there are punitive measures for them. There are ways that we can eliminate those police officers. Mm -hmm. But it seems the reaction from the left is always to, you know, one size fits all uh, cure for this when it really doesn't, it, it should not be the case. Yeah, I want to move on to something else um, specifically mm -hmm. that was happening here in New York, also some other big cities all across the country. This is anti-Semitic attacks that have escalated uh, since pro-Palestinian protests have been taking place. Uh, take a look at some of these protests that have occurred in New York City uh, just within the past couple of weeks. Uh, your thoughts on this as we continue to see this across the country. Have you ever seen anything like it before? You know, this has been throughout our community. A lot of the PR uh, mm -hmm. is, is pre they're presenting false information. You know, if people would just understand the facts and the truth about what's really happening in Israel. And I think this uh, BDS movement, you know, the boycott, divest yeah. and sanction movement against Israel has caused a lot of problems. And in my community, which has a very small Jewish population, we've seen a rise in anti-Semitism, most of it coming from our university settings, where unfortunately, a lot of this misinformation is spread and students don't really have the opportunity or are at least are not availing themselves of the whole picture. You know, we need to be making sure we get the truth out and, and really standing up against anti-Semitism because it is growing in our communities. And sadly, you're seeing these attacks even in New York City uh, which, you know, it's unfortunate. But right now there's, you know, the social media, of course, is, you know, I hate to blame it for everything, but there's a lot of people that get to take action on social media without having any any response. So, uh, you know, there's no real recourse on it. It's not just so uh, social media, though. We also have uh, legislators like Congresswoman um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We have Rashida Tlaib and others um, speaking out and, and being perhaps more vocal than others when it comes to defending Israel uh, and their voices being heard, uh, yes, on social media and then nationally on mainstream media organizations as well. Well, it's unfortunate they stand on the floor of the House of Representatives and mm -hmm. spread false information about what's really happening. You know, when 4,300 missiles are fired by a terrorist organization like Hamas into Israel, like any other country, Israel has to protect itself. And actually, many innocent Palestinians, as we know, were killed during yeah. those Hamas attacks. Hamas isn't looking out for the Palestinians. They're seeking power and they're see seeking the destruction of the Israeli state. So, I mean, these types of facts need to come out. People need to just like tone it down and lower the temperature and look at the facts and understand what's happening. I mean, this is a tragic situation. But again, I mean, firing the flames or fanning the flames like AOC and also Rashida Tlaib is unfortunate. You know, these members uh, should be helping us tell the truth about there's certainly two sides to every argument. Mm -hmm. But let's get the truth about it and let's not just gaslight all these issues. Yeah. All right. Congresswoman Tenney, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.